Thanks. Um, thank you, Alex. I'm not sure I'll be able to live up to that introduction. It'll all be an anticlimax. Um, but I would like to talk about data. That's uh, kind of what I do. Everybody is talking about data. Um, apparently, it's the most valuable resource in the world. Um, data is the new oil, or maybe it's the new gold, or maybe it's the new bacon. <laughs> what does this mean? I mean, what do all these metaphors actually mean? It's not just that data has value. Everybody knows that. I think what all these headlines are getting at is that data is beginning to behave more and more like a traditional commodity or an asset class. Companies are exploring for data. They're mining it. They're refining it. Um, and they're buying and selling data, just like they buy and sell oil and gold. Um, now, this could be training data for AI as an machine learning. It could be data about their customers, their competitors, their counterparties, their industries. But there's a huge amount of data activity happening. And I wanted to show you, share just a couple of examples and maybe learn some lessons from them. Um, so let's start with car insurance. Now, car auto insurance firms make most of their money from the premiums that are paid by drivers like you and me. But they also have a ton of data on new car purchasing patterns. And they actually sell that data to auto industry analysts. Um, we came across a, a shipping firm that uses machine learning and satellite data to track cargo ships to combat piracy. But that same data set can be used to track imports and exports. And so they sell it to investors in global trade. Um, there's another IoT firm that puts sensors and truck engines to maximize fuel efficiency. Um, guess what? That data set can be used to track e-commerce deliveries because, you know, when you buy something from Amazon, it comes to your door in a truck. Now, none of these are data companies. They've never sold data before. But they're all sitting on valuable data assets and they're monetizing it. And I want to talk about a few interesting things about the companies that are doing this. First, as you'll notice, um, the buyers of this data, they're pretty wide range, but a lot of them come from the financial industry, and that's only natural um, in the markets. If you have information that other people don't have, you can make money from it. Um, the other really, really hot area for using this kind of un obscure and untapped data is in the entire AI and machine learning um, uh, and analytics space where they're just ravenous for, they'll just suck up any data you have. Um, the second interesting thing is that a lot of companies in this ecosystem are actually startups. And that is something new. I mean, there's an old Silicon Valley joke about a startup with great product, tons of users, zero revenue. How are they going to make money? Oh, we're going to sell the data. Right? <laughs> and it is a joke because it's really hard to do. Um, but, you know, and there's always a but, there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And the time has come for this idea that selling data can be a viable business model. Um, it's just a question of finding the right application. All these years, people thought that the right application for startups looking to sell data was data on consumers. But the truth is, without the scale of a Google or a Facebook, that's really hard to do. Turns out a much better application is data about businesses. What can we know about a particular brand or product or company? All the examples I gave you um, came from that realm. Um, so that's the second point. And then the third learning I want to share is that, and this is should be obvious, but just having the data, it's not enough. And here again, the analogy with other natural resources is really good. Think about crude oil. Um, it has to be prospected, drilled, refined, transported, converted into a, a dozen downstream products, pharmaceuticals, fertilizers, plastics, solvents, you name it, before it gets actual end user value. And there's an entire industry around each and every one of those downstream products. Fertilizers alone is like $150 billion. Um, 
same with gold. It has to be um, assayed, appraised, alloyed, melted into jewelry uh, before it gets value. There's an entire, in fact, there's an entire value chain along uh, for, to get value out of gold. And it turns out that there is a value chain around data, and it's actually very, very similar to the one around gold. Data has to be identified and mined and cleaned and extracted and merged with other data sets um, and packaged and analyzed. And you, know, you have to draw insights from it before you get value. And so we're seeing the emergence of not just startups selling data, but an entire ecosystem of startups at every stage of that value chain um, around data. And this is, you know, this is just a, a couple dozen examples from the financial data industry, but you name it, there's, uh, there's startups doing it in the data world. Um, and that kind of brings me almost to the end of my five minutes, so I will just try to summarize real quick the three key points. Data is an asset. People are buying and selling data just like they buy and sell anything else. If you have data, or if you're interested in data, you can probably get it. Second, <laughs> the buyers include financial services firms, AI and ML and analytics firms, and a very, very wide spectrum. The sellers, and this is new, include a bunch of startups. And third, um, there is uh, a growing ecosystem of companies involved in the data value chain. Uh, my own company, Quandle, is one of them, so if you want to learn more about that, or if you have interesting data that you want to monetize, if you're looking for interesting data, um, or if you just want to talk about the ecosystem, I'd love to, love to chat afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Hi there. Traditionally, people would make some sort of model theoretical thing that if A happens, then B and C in this little structure, and then we'll data mine that information. But from my latest readings, companies are doing this reverse. They're mass big data, gathering all the information, doing statistical analysis or some other format, and then extrapolating what the model, I real model is. So how are you guys approaching to mine or data quantify this information? Are we taking existing data, metadata and all that stuff and structuring it into a financial model? Or are we doing financial modeling and say, GM or GE is gonna make a car and they want to find something else? Like how is the approach you're trying to solve this? I'm trying to understand how and what you're doing this quantum analysis. Right, I, I guess the question is, does the data drive the model or does the model drive the data? Um, and the answer is it could be both. Um, you know, in some cases, you have really, really rich data sets where you don't actually know what insights or signals it holds. You don't even know necessarily what industry or customer it's valuable for. Um, you know, it might be in interesting for global trade. It might be interesting for an auto manufacturer. It might be interesting for a real estate investor. The same data set. So sometimes, uh, that, and that's where non-parametric techniques and AI and ML techniques um, technology really helps. In other cases, you have fairly narrow data sets where the application is pretty obvious, but the thing is that the data is really obscure and untapped and hard to get, so the trick is in extracting it and cleaning it and refining it, but the actual modeling part is pretty straightforward. So it cuts both ways. Last question. Uh, so let's say you have a startup or a tech company that is bought into the value of data and wants to set up a data department. What is the first role that you would advise they hire and wh what sort of rollout plan in terms of, of hiring would you advise on? Great, qu great question. Um, I think you know there are certain roles which generalize no matter what, like you know, data engineers and data scientists and statisticians. But before you go down any of those paths, the very first thing you need is domain expertise. I don't think you can uh, solve any problem for any domain without knowing something about that domain. And you, you know, there are th we haven't yet reached the technology, the the level where um, 
ana analytic techniques, and which I include AI and ML, are good enough that they can be applied across a broad, a broad spectrum. Um, and that's, that's the generalist approach. So you have to start much narrower with a specialist in the domain that you're solving problems for, or the domain that you're collecting data from. Um, when, if, you, if you know an industry or a vertical or a customer or, or a product line really, really well, it just makes, it, it makes your um, life a lot easier. Thank you. Thank you.